Hey guys and welcome back to Number 9 Farms. What I wanted to tell y'all is that um, as I share my garden today, uh, I've been growing in a high tunnel now. This is my sixth year. Uh, me and Bruce uh, built the high tunnel. Um, we actually had, uh, we were, had asked for some help and the guy showed up and he wasn't here maybe what an hour and he said his girlfriend needed him and he left. Yeah. Because you were driving in the um, poles. These, these poles on the side were 10 feet tall. And he was about, what, 22, 23 years old? Yeah. He drove in one pole and his girlfriend had an emergency and he had to go. And we never seen him again. <laughs> he never even <laughs> he come never back. He never even come back for his money. He never even come back to get paid. He said, I'm never going back down there again. So... So, uh, you know, this is hard work, and, and a lot of people, they just get their high, um, high tunnels built. And what we did was we used the money to get the bigger one instead of a smaller one and where the other people had to do the labor. So that's how we ended up with a 100 by 30 yes. um, high tunnel with the uh, sides that roll down. And what a lot of people ask me is... Um, what shade cloth I use and the, uh, the shade cloth now when we first the first year when we started what you could tell was the shade cloth had to come on when the plant started turning a, a little yellow you, you knew right then that they were just getting too much sun so um, we went ahead and put the 70% um, um, shade cloth on and we do have a video on how we do the shade cloth which uh, Bruce did come up with another easier way this year because, you know, he's, he saw that his, uh... My mechanical skills. <laughs> it's when you do everything by yourself, you come up with a lot of ways, so... Um, and so basically, why I switched to container garden in here, this actually happened last year. Well, the first year, everything grew amazing. I mean, like, phenomenal. Alright, so the second year rolled around. We did really good. Uh, things were going well. Well, third year came around. Well, and as you know, you never plant tomatoes in the same spot, or at least a three-year period. Um, we had to switch to, uh, we started growing peppers in here. And they weren't growing. They weren't putting off any fruit, anything. And they were this tall. They were beautiful. Well, they had uh, pretty much had some disease on them and everything, so we had to send off to North Carolina State. And actually, they were having a hard time figuring it out. And they, they said it was glyphosate. Well, we hadn't used glyphosate, except for Bruce had used it one time in here. And never ever do that. Yeah, never ever do that. And what they thought maybe was happening, and this was like before it even came, he did that and um or it was right at right around the same time but what they thought was to have happened was it was condensating at the top of the uh, greenhouse and dripping and down falling down on the plants well that ended up not being the case so they came back and they said we can't figure this out and come to find out we were using the county water well we had tried the well the first year. The well didn't um, work. The well had too much acid in it. Even with the pH, everything. We couldn't, couldn't, couldn't do get it. it right. Couldn't nothing. get it right for nothing. And one old timer told us to uh, put battery acid in it to try to get it up. Well, I was like, I don't know about that. But, I mean, I guess that's what you had to do, you know, back in the day. Yep. Um, so I was kind of worried about that. So anyways, as North Carolina State um, can't figure it out, well, it ended up being the county water, and the county water is so heavily laden with uh, salt. salt that it was 800 parts per million. Correct. Well, they said 80 parts per million can kill plants. plants. So there was the problem. Well. They came out, we had the time we had the drip irrigation running. Yep. They could not figure out why the, they, they went to at the very end of where the drip irrigation came out. They checked there. 
they checked everywhere here on this property where water was coming from the county. They all came back pretty much exactly like even they could not believe it coming right out of our faucet out of our um kitchen yeah that it was it was like 378 parts at the faucet yeah so it was just as much at the uh so what had happened was the the salt residue was building up in here so and then and that's an old timer also told me he said that would happen with any garden space if you were using any kind of water because eventually if the rain wasn't coming and cleaning it off and, and dispersing it that was going to happen too so um they said they wanted us to flood the high tunnel with rain water or some type of water that was yeah, we, salt in it. Yep. well that was going to be impossible because it was so an astronomical amount of water that it would take a flood to do that yeah and we didn't have that so um, that year, we started switching to the containers, and uh, Bruce and had the geocloth, and we put the geocloth down, and um, started laying everything out. Well, what I did was I started because uh, this is kind of like on a slope, and so the slope, of course, the water will run down the slope. So the stuff in the back would be better off than the stuff up front. Because there would be more rainwater coming from underneath the ground and everything sliding down. So we planted more stuff back there and everything did did pretty good. We did and we had a phenomenal year actually. So that's why everything switched to container because you don't want that salt residue to build up. Well, we could not replace the plastic. They wanted us to take the plastic off. off. We couldn't and afford it. There's no way I could afford more plastic. No. The plastic is very expensive. Plus, it's a really hard job to yeah. take it off and put it back on. So, that's the reason that now we grow in high tunnel, no, containers in the high tunnel. And, and we use mainly rainwater, and we do use our swamp water that we treat. And, oh, but like, like times Bruce had me um, little raised beds and stuff over here, um, which worked out well, and we would add the um, soil to it. But eventually, that got to be really hard on me for my back, so we switched to all this. And this is now the second year in the containers. Yes. And you, as you can see, second year containers, rainwater, swamp water that we treat for the pH. And well, we have to treat the rainwater too. We have to treat the rainwater too. And so. For our, um, it, a lot of people say, well, what is your uh, fertilizers and stuff? Well, the fertilizers that we use is uh, liquid fertilizer. Yes. And instead of having drip irrigation anymore, I actually water everything every day. But we're here every day, like from the end of June through July. Now this year, I don't know, because they are having this grand solar minimum. So we'll see how that goes. Because right now, I've only had to water every other day. And by now, normally, I would have to water every single day. If not twice a day sometimes. Yeah, sometimes I've come down here twice. And literally I can't leave because no. of that. And um, a lot of people say, well, when are you coming back? When are you coming back? When, no. I can't leave the plants. No, so, this is our food and um, she has to take care of them. And also, you know, our, our value-added products for the uh, peppers and stuff. So, alright guys, well, I hope you liked the video on how we grow in the high tunnel and why we grow in containers. And we love the high tunnel? Yeah. We love the high tunnel. Oh, yeah. Everybody should have one. Oh, yeah. The high tunnel is the best thing I ever did. Yes. And... And I love containers now. I'll never grow in the dirt again. Yes. It, it'll always be containers from now on. The high tunnel, and, I, and of course we are here, hurricanes. We are right off the Outer Banks of North Carolina. Um, we're about 80 miles from uh, basically the Kildeva Hills, uh, Nags Head. You know that area, which a lot of people do. So um, we do get a lot of hurricanes, and every time it's a hurricane, I worry, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? You know, what if I lose this plastic? Well. Um, the sides, you want to keep your sides up. Completely closed because up. Because that way the it can't get in here and blow up 
you know, blow up, the wind can blow it up and blow the cover off and stuff. So you, we keep it all closed up and um, for the snow. Uh, yes, yes. Okay. Yes. Now, snow is not a big issue here because we don't really get a lot of snow, but the years sometimes we do get snow. It is. Um, and as you can see, our, uh, our, t our, pi our, ra our pipes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, you got me there, balls. Okay, I don't know what you want to call the pipe. Our tubing. This is all in tubing, whatever, is further apart than yes. say if I was up north in yes. Wisconsin. And this isn't like an that. this is an industrial one. We have a little bit heavier duty one. That, and that's why we have no roof supports going from side to side. So, um, what what we have to do is we come down here and. Bruce, when I say the word snow, Bruce right. is like, oh my gosh, because literally you can't sleep. You, you it's have terrible. to literally come down here with a pole and a tennis ball, and also he uses um, the screed... Uh, concrete broom. Concrete broom. And a concrete handle. And concrete handles because it's so large, and he just beats off the snow because if, what happened is the very first year when we had snow, we didn't know that. We didn't know it. We, we almost learned a it. terrible well, lesson. A friend of mine who also had a high tunnel, John. Thank you, John. Thank you. Um, John said, he called us that morning. And he said, did uh, did y'all check your high tunnel? And we said, no. We're out <laughs> there doing, eating, drinking coffee on the porch in and the snow. We were in Utopia. And, uh, John said, um, well, you better check it. Well, we came down here, and it literally was bowed in. And that was the first year. And I'm gonna tell you right now, we both like had heart attacks. It had over a foot of snow on top and of it. We, it was. We ran back and got all our gear on, our call hearts, everything, and we were out here. And I'm telling you, we were out here for a long time that day. You won't need your call heart. You'll need a T-shirt after you start pumping that snow off this yes. thing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I get no volunteers for that job. And um. What else could I tell them about the, uh, really that was it? That's really it. That was a big learning curve and the, the shade cloth, if you don't have a, if you get a high tunnel and you don't get a shade cloth, you're going to, well, depending maybe, on where you live. Yeah, maybe not up north. I, I, we don't know. We don't know, but here where we live. Yeah, we're, you know, like I said, coastal North Carolina. Look how shady it is in here now, you know. If you were just to take that shade cloth, you would not be in here without sunglasses on and these plants would just be baking so. so and I think that's about it you know and you, of course you don't want to like uh, another thing they had thought too for the straw yes the, um, the straw is a is an issue when you use the straw in your high tunnel if it's been sprayed with the uh, graze on that will build up in your soil and that's what they use to keep the mold and the grass and the weeds out of everything uh, so that will build up in here. That will build up anywhere. So will the arsenic from your chicken. We have well, our chicken. That chi was more commercial chickens. That's more commercial chicken feed. If you buy that, we have our feed ground for us so we don't have an arsenic issue because they put arsenic in the commercial feeds. So everything and builds to up. To make them hungry. To make them hungry so they eat more. Thank and you, Joe Saladin. Thank you, Joe Saladin, for telling us that. We appreciate Joel. Joel, we appreciate that. And we've learned a lot as we go through this journey. I have a great teacher over here. That's only because I read the books. You read the books. What? And if you guys have any questions, it's all just a learning journey. So. All right, guys. Thank you for watching.